All right, baseball fans, it's time for an edition of The Brew. Jersey Joe, Ion, and you with a little baseball question this week for you. Once again, those of you who follow us on social media, you already know the question, but here it is anyhow. What is your opinion of the MLB lockout? How long do you think it'll last? What do you think it'll take to resolve it? What is your general thoughts? We got lots of your answers on this one, some thoughtful answers this week. And you know, Joel and I, we love our baseball. Clearly, look at the way we're dressed right now. So, uh, Joel, what do you think about the whole MLB lockout deal here? Uh, when's it going to end? You know, what are your thoughts? How, what changes would you make? First of all, it's going to end probably in January or February. This year is different. I know last, like when we were talking about 2020, and we, we had the show on 2020 when they were trying to figure out what they were going to do for the year, we're pretty much dealing with a continuation of that with this lock, potential lockout. Like, and I say potential, I mean, it is locked out now for the players, but potential lockout for the fans that can't go to the games. But ownership and the players would be walking away from way too much money to just be like, no, we're not going to play. This is not 1994 anymore. Baseball has done really well the last year and a half uh, with, with coming back. So there's no way that they're going to do that. Now, that being said, revenue went up so much last year and salaries for players didn't match it. They did not elevate to the same level. So it's not a both sides issue. I already know we're going to get a shitload of comments. They're going to be like, millionaires and billionaires fighting. Only the fan loses. No. You're a worker just like I am, just like the players are. The players make closer salary to what you and I make. Even uh, Bryce Harper, 13-year deal, $330 million. When he's done with that deal, he's still going to be closer to what you and I make. So it's not a it's not a both sides issue. It is the owners need to go. Okay, shit. We have a little bit more money. We need to pay them their fair share. The end. I only think they not only need to play the pay the players their fair share. Could we like raise the salaries for the people actually work in the stadium? So your concession stand, your ground keepers. I think everybody needs a piece of that pie. I know the the players are, are a big part of it because they're the ones that have to get on the field and perform. But you know, if the owners are making money, the players are making money, then let's take care of everybody else. Make sure the workers are taken care of as well because they are also an intricate part of that ballpark experience. When you go to a game, they make sure you know you're taken care of. You know, you have a hot dog in your hand. So we. Need take care of them as well and did you agree. Did, did you take a sneak peek of the answers already because you're right a lot of people did comment about the owners being you know all greedy and stuff like I, that i didn't but you know what every time this topic comes up it's like a bunch of misinformed fans that say that same stupid shit without actually paying attention go look at the revenues it's it's public information I have two other suggestions that I was going to bring up besides revenue because I know they're also talking about making some changes to the game, which MLB has been tinkering with the game a little bit. And there's two things that – one thing that I think does need to happen, and that is definitely a pitch clock and definitely enforcing it, though. we got to move these games along. Like, they are getting stretched out way too long. I know football is getting long, too, and I love a good baseball game. Don't get me wrong. But we got to, like, move this along. It's got to be 30 seconds, boom, or there's some type of penalty or it's a strike or something like that. It's not on me to figure that out. It's just on me to tell them to get the game moving along. But the one big thing that they're proposing that I don't like is the wild card situation where the winning team gets to pick who their opponent is. I think that's going to set up for a little bit of disaster on a couple of fronts. Number one, because everybody's going to want to play the Yankees, or they're going to want to play the best team. And then how do you figure out who makes that vote? Is it the players? Is it the coach? Is it the fans? Like, who is actually in charge of that vote? Is Simon Cowell, you know, on some panel of three, as we always do, you know, in charge of that? So you need to, you know, you don't pick a winner. That's not how you need to earn those spots. That that's I'm not worried about the money so much. I'm worried about that. But I also feel that this lockout is probably going to go – I don't think it's going to impact spring training, but I do think it's going to go into February. Maybe it might impact pitchers and catchers reporting because, you know, they can't do anything right now. They can't even go see the doctor or the players because they are locked out. But I do think it's going to, like, go a little – it's not going to wrap up right now. I do think we've got at least a month and a half to two months until it does. I, okay, I agree with you on pretty much everything you just said. Yeah, the owners are going to fold just like they did in 2020. They're going to fold again because there's too much money to walk away from. You can't start the season late again this year. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you big time. So, uh, yeah, and everything else you said, I agree with. I, I don't like the idea of picking. This is a college football. You don't, it's not like, oh, we think these teams should play. No, there should be a set in stone rule, just like there is in all the other pro sports, where wherever you land in the seedings, that's where you play. You don't get to pick that shit. That is really, 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 really corny. 
I am going to add to your comment about the difference between the lockout now and in 94 because there's two things. You're right. There's more money on the table now, which you're not going to take a loss, especially after what happened in 2020. But secondly, they purposely timed the lockout to happen now in the offseason, not in the middle of the season where it's going to put the World Series in jeopardy again. So just even that thought process along, alone is already like changing the way the difference between the two. I know people are comparing it. And 94, the lockout did seriously hurt the game. It took the game years to recover. They lost a lot of fans over it. I don't think that the owners are going to risk that again. And the players, I don't think are going to risk that either. Not, not now. Right. I agree with you. Well, let's get to lots of answers here. You already gave us a free preview of what a few of them are, so prepare yourself because uh, here we go. So what do you think? Uh, what's your opinion on the MLB lockout? Rolf Guitar says, money on both sides have destroyed the game. Uh, Rudy says, it's the player's fault for wanting high-paid contracts and some aren't worth much. Harsh says, I can see both sides basically acting like we all did when we had a week to do a college exam. Do nothing until we're coming up on the deadline and then get a half-ass deal done. Real Treats tweets, the losers in all this are the fans as usual. Both sides are at fault. Something has to be done to make it affordable for the average family to be able to go to a ball game and not have to save for months to do so. In the back of my head, I am gonna, I do have one little thought, and it's the good old adage, you know, what's it gonna cost me? Of course. Everybody, that's the basic, that's the A1 basic thing everyone's gonna think of as a fan. But none of that has to change. They don't have to raise prices on any fans. They can make the same amount of money and keep the same prices. They can even make more money with how popular the game is getting again. So there, anything else, anything else that comes out of this, I'm sure there will be, I'm sure there'll be some propaganda that's like, oh yeah, you know, we had to raise the prices. No, you don't have to, you didn't have to. The game is popular enough right now as it is. You don't have to change it. You just need to pay your players a little bit better. And, and like Joe said, the workers at the stadium, because they make pretty much close to minimum wage and they're doing the work. Oh, I have one other point I totally forgot to make in my uh, my sermon earlier that I've got to say in this show. Okay. They have got to end the MLB blackout rules with the streaming between other cities. If I'm buying the MLB.tv package, I want to see every game. I don't want to blackout. Like, we can't get MSG here. I know MLB is not on that, but you're, you're blacked out from local games Put them all on the app. If you, even if it's a local broadcast, I'm not figuring out how to give them the rules. I don't want to pay for a product that I can't, like, watch the game on. Correct. Yeah, I think that's a universal, like, fans, are, that is something that hurts the fans. Like, Matt Treat mentioned, that's something that hurts the fan. That is. That doesn't have anything to do with the lockout, but that is a really, really good point. I'm in Vegas. I'm blacked out of six teams, and I'm nowhere near anyone. I, I'm not a road trip. I'm, it's like a full day to road trip to go to a game and come back, like, it's ridiculous. You're killing the popularity that you could have if you didn't do that. Well, that, that should be wrong right there. There's no city that should be blacked out for six teams. One, maybe two at the most. You can't black out six teams. That's just, that's insane to even think that was okay. There's no one within 400 miles. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't be blacked out of anything. And we got a final answer here. It's from Starman. He says, at this point, I'd rather go to minor league games. They are far cheaper, more fun, and more dramatic. Sadly, MLB has turned their back on the minors. The well-to-do executives don't care about the fans. It's all about cash. Following the NBA plan of making mistakes. Did the NBA make uh, similar mistakes? I'm not, I wasn't sure on that one. Yeah, we should probably skip that one. I, I, I don't know the specifics. If it, unless he's talking about the one 10 years ago, I don't know which one he's talking about. I do like his point, though, about minor leagues, how MLB has kind of screw around the minor league system a little too, a bit too much too. And those are great times. They're fun games. They are affordable for the family as well. So I, I hate the fact that they've taken away so many of those teams and some of those opportunities where it's just, I, I don't know, it, it had a really, really good local aspect and flavor to the game on, and it helped the national level later. Right. Rob Manfred got rid of that. That was a, that was a him thing. He made Pat O'Connor retire with his stupid moves. And you just took uh, baseball out of 40 cities. You took baseball out of 40 cities you could have created fans. You could have created people who are going to want to watch it on TV. You took that away. So you went in favor of money instead of actually growing for the future. That's a decision they made, and they'll have to live with it. But, you know, the popularity of the game is still growing right now, so maybe that won't hurt them in the long run. But it just, it, it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right if you want people from small towns to pay attention like they do with football and basketball. I also wonder how many of those small town markets have six teams blacked out in their city as well. <laughs> That's a good point too. Midwest. Midwest is a great example. There's so many teams that are blacked out for so many different people. It's like, do you guys want anyone to watch your sport? 
Well, let's get to the poll right now because that always has your uh, final opinion on it. So do you think the MLB lockout will be resolved before spring training? This is one of the closest polls we ever had because 55% of their fans said no. 45% said yes. So just barely, you guys don't think that it will be resolved. It's one time where I think I kind of disagree with the poll. I think it will be resolved, but it's going to go right to the red line. Yeah, I don't think it'll go to the red line. I'm, I I disagree with the poll also, but only a little bit. I, I still think this is going to get dragged out, but I think they'll get it done before spring training because when they start looking at how much money they're going to lose this time around, not like in the pandemic, but like this time, this is a different story. It is. And, you know, usually I'm looking at the poll here. Usually we, our poll has, like, a real definitive answer. Like, it's, like, one answer is way out there. This is this one's tight. So it obviously says to me that everybody's kind of conflicted on whether this will be resolved or not. It's all – maybe it's part of a negotiation tactic, you know? I, I don't know. It's likely, actually. All right, well, look, you got some great answers there, opinions all over the place on this edition. But one thing we do know, hey, you guys still love baseball. One thing I know, you'll have more fun when you click that like, subscribe button down below for all the fun here on the Jersey Joe 50 YouTube channel. No lockouts or blackouts here. Four great shows available to you every week. Oh, and free of charge as well. How's that? Something for free. Don't get a lot of things for free in this day and age. But um, look, it's Christmas time. I'm already look, thinking about baseball. It's just my favorite sport. I'm looking forward to spring training and everything already. So, uh, hey, let's get this cold winter over with and let's get back to the ballpark. I'm trying to get back to opening day in – Yankees are playing at the Rangers at the new ballpark. It'll be my last one. I'm fully with you on that. I hope Joe's with me, actually. Knock another ballpark off the list, Joe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> if we can. If we can. We have a plan in works for this, Ari. We have a plan in works. I just got to get my time approved off, and it'll be uh, taken care of. So, As long as we're right about the uh, overall poll, we'll have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, please don't lock it out because you want to take the trip. All right, Jersey Joe, I had a new saying thanks for watching. Thanks for your great comments, and we'll see you next time, I hope. <laughs>